Hey, what's happening everybody? My name is Jeremy, in case you're new here, and today we're going over the 360 Heroes GoPro mount. So this is a 360 spherical mount. It holds six GoPros in there. I have six Hero 4 Blacks, and you can capture a full 360 degree video using this mount. Now, I've been using this mount for a few months, and it's actually been really great. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, so I'm going to be giving you guys a little tour of how it works, how you take the GoPros out, how you put them back in, and there's also three different mounting positions that you can use with this mount. Now it comes with this little uh, attachment here at the bottom, uh, it also comes with a little carrying case, and my favorite part, it comes with a dog clicker. And not only am I going to be talking about the 360 Heroes mount here, I'm also going to be talking about the 360 Heroes Cam Man software. It's like a file management software which will keep all your clips organized and it does a lot more other things. But let's just get right into this video. So I want to give you a closer look of what this mount looks like. So like I said before, you got different mounting positions. Here's one, here's another, and there's another one right under camera one. Now I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later. When I first got this, I was actually kind of scared to pull back on these latches because what you have to do is pull back on this and then stick the camera in. So you notice there's like a little latch here too. That's where the, uh, the GoPro camera kind of sits in there. But I wasn't sure how far I could pull this back, but it's actually really durable. So you can pull it back pretty far. So all you really do is pull back on this latch and then sit the GoPro in there and just lock it in. Turned on a GoPro by accident. So if you're entirely new to 360 degree videos, you're probably thinking to yourself, this is hard, I'm probably not gonna understand how to do this, but you're completely wrong. 360 degree videos are actually really simple. There's just a few things that you need to know and keep in mind and remember each time you shoot. And if you know those few tips and tricks, you'll have awesome 360 degree videos every single time. So there's a few things you need to know. So, you know, I'm using six GoPro Hero 4 Blacks in here. There's three different modes I can use when shooting a 360 degree video. You can use 960p mode, 1440p mode or 2.7K 4x3. So the reason why you wanna use those modes is because they're a 4x3 aspect ratio, meaning it's using the whole GoPro sensor, meaning it's a really wide shot. And the reason why you want it to be really wide is because each GoPro uh, in each section needs to have a little bit of overlap so that the software can create control points which will allow each camera to be stitched together all the way around. Each resolution mode has different frame rates. You wanna make sure that the frame rates match across all the GoPros. If you're just starting out, I recommend use 1440p mode, uh, either 48 frames per second or 60 frames per second. Uh, and if you stitch that all together, you'll end up with a 4K output. If you wanna work with 8K, you need to shoot in 2.7K 4x3, and you'll be able to get a nice 8K crazy big 360 degree video. So now the most important part when it comes to making 360 degree videos is synchronization. Now you want to make sure that all six GoPros are perfectly synchronized. If not, you're not going to end up with a nice 360 degree video. Now in the software that I'm going to be using color auto pano video pro, which I'll show you later, it has an automatic synchronization process, but you need to do the different synchronization methods when you shoot your video. So there's two different methods. You got an audio sync and a motion sync. So that's where the dog clicker comes in handy. So right now I have all six GoPro cameras linked up to my Wi-Fi remote. And what I'm gonna do is just hit record. So now they're all recording. I'm gonna wait like, let's say four or five seconds just to make sure. And what I like to do is make sure that they're all recording, look around. Uh, sometimes they're not all gonna record. So definitely make sure they're recording. After about five seconds, do the clicker a few times and um, basically that's it. That's all you gotta do. Now what I do is I do the audio method with the clicker and then what I'll also do is pick the rig up and do a motion. So I'll spin it around like this. Sometimes if it's windy, the audio, uh, the GoPro mics won't pick up the clicker, so do the motion 
and you'll save yourself a lot of time. So definitely do both methods. All right, so you've been shooting all day. The next step would be to obviously get all those clips onto your computer so you can start stitching them together. Now imagine you shoot all day. Let's just say you have 20 clips. 20 clips times the six GoPro cameras, you're gonna have 120 different clips to import onto your computer. Some of those clips might be longer, some of them might be shorter, but either way, it's gonna take a long time to do. So what I like to use is the Anchor 10 port USB 3.0 hub, and what I use with that is the Transcend micro SD card readers, plug them all in, and you can import them all simultaneously onto your PC. All right, so before I go out and shoot, I wanna get my SD cards ready and get them named properly so it makes my process a little bit easier. So we're gonna be using the 360 Camman software. So this is the screen that's gonna pop up first. I created a folder called Tutorial for the sake of this tutorial, and it's just gonna open up. So the first thing that we notice here is the SD cards in plugged into my PC using that USB hub. The top left here shows which camera rig uh, you wanna you know use. So I'm using the six GoPro camera rig, so I have that selected. Now in the format section, this is gonna allow you to reformat all your SD cards simultaneously or sequentially, and it'll do that all automatically. In the copy section, this is where you're gonna after you're done shooting. Uh, allow you to import all your files from your SD cards to your PC. Now the first thing that I want to do is go to the drive assigned section. We're going to have to name these SD cards properly. So what I'm going to do is select the first one here and then click auto increment down here and then I'm going to click relabel drive. So you'll see it gets renamed to head one and then camera one. So we're going to click the second one, click relabel and so on until we get to the sixth GoPro. And you'll see why this is important later when we get to the copy section. Now that I have my SD cards properly named, I'm gonna to go to the format section and I'm going to reformat all these SD cards. So I'm gonna click confirm and then you have to type out here, I agree. So after you type I agree in all caps, you're ready to reformat all the SD cards. So click format SD one through six and I'm gonna select auto start on correct drive load and then click begin drive formatting. It's gonna reformat all the SD cards, it's done. That's how quick it is. So now we're ready to go out and shoot. All right, so I have a really short window to do this. Looks like it's gonna start storming soon, but right now I have it mounted in this position here so you can see kind of how it looks. Hit record on all cameras, make sure they're all recording. Looks good, so I'm gonna do the clicker. That's good, and now I'm just gonna pick it up and do a rotation and let that record for a little bit. All right, so this is what the finished stitch looks like. It looks great. Now, if we go over to Auto Pano Giga, we get an idea of what these stitches look like. So you notice you have one camera pointing up here, one down here. On the opposite side, we got the same thing one pointing up, one pointing down, and then you have these two were just pointing off to the side. So that's what this looks like. Now let's check out the next mounted position. Now here's the other mounted position. Notice I lose my slipper there. Now if we go over to Auto Pano Giga, we notice that the stitches are very different. So now we got like octagons. <laughs> those aren't octagons, those are pentagons. So let's check out the last mounted position using the five GoPro setup. Oh man, it's starting to rain. I need to get this like right now. Okay, I'm gonna hit record, do the clicker, do the rotation. Just my luck, right? All right, that's gotta be enough. Uh, <laughs> Caught it just in time. I just walked inside and this is happening right now. It's pouring crazy. All right, so here's what the five GoPro stitch looks like. The first thing you obviously notice is the bottom is missing and this is because we didn't have a GoPro pointing in the down position. Now, later in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to add a logo in that place so that it'll cover up that blank space. Now, if we go over to Auto Pano Giga, we notice that the stitches are now vertical, which is probably the best position that you can have your uh, GoPro set up so that when the subject in the video walks between the different stitches, you can actually mask uh, between the different stitches so that's like a seamless um, 
it's like a seamless pass between the different stitches but I'm gonna have to leave that for a totally another tutorial but yeah that's what all the three different mounted positions look like now let's get on with the rest of this video all right, so we're done recording and we got to get all these files onto the PC to stitch later. So we need to get everything organized. I'm going to go to copy here and I'm going to select multiple cards. So the first thing that I notice here, it says video count 17, video match, no. So the software is saying there isn't a match because remember I did three different takes and on the third take I only used five GoPros. Now the reason why this is complaining is because I have the uh, the six GoPro camera rig selected up top. So the software is pretty smart. If you know the sixth camera wasn't recording, it's gonna let you know that there's a problem with one of the takes. But this is fine for this tutorial. So I'm gonna click uh, under project name, hit create, and I'm gonna say, um, you know, I'm just gonna make it my name, Jeremy. And then click OK, click OK again. And now the next step is to just copy these files to your PC. So I'm going to go to copy videos from SD1 to 6 and then click start batch copy. So you can see it's copying pretty quick. Um, okay, we got all six cameras copied to my PC. Click OK. Now the next step is to go to manage takes and I'm going to hit open video analyzer. It's going to let you know if there's any problems with these files and doesn't look like there's any issues. So now I'm gonna go to move to takes, hit explore so we could see that folder. And you notice we have take one and all those six GoPro videos are in there. Take two, all six are in there. And take three says NG, which I'm assuming means probably no good, but I'm gonna go in there and you should only see five GoPro videos. All right, so now it's time to get stitching. So the software I use is by color and it's called Auto Pano Video Pro and I'm using version 2.3. Now Color was recently acquired by GoPro, so this is a GoPro product. Now I'm gonna select all these six GoPro cameras here and get them imported. So we notice we have the six different clips. So what I'm gonna do is down here is go to the point at which I started to click the dog clicker. So I'm gonna fast forward here a little bit to six seconds and I'm gonna to go to synchro now what I have here set to is 15 seconds so it's gonna search the video clip uh, 15 seconds before 15 seconds after you can make this shorter it could be five seconds because the clicker only went off for like about two or three seconds but I'm gonna select use audio synchronize now if if it can't synchronize using audio I'm gonna to have to use the motion method but I'm pretty sure this is gonna work. Okay, so it says accurate synchronization found, so I'm gonna click apply, and then X out here. Now I'm gonna just go ahead a little bit more here after I do the rotation, and go to about, yeah, 16 seconds, and I'm gonna pull this bar to the 16 second mark, and I'm gonna let it go to the 28 second mark, and pull this out here. Now the next step is to go to the stitch section, and I'm gonna, Make sure I choose GoPro here and use current selection and then click stitch. So we'll wait a few seconds. It's gonna analyze all the six GoPro cameras, create control points and try to stitch it all together. All right, looks like we're just about done. We don't need this window anymore, the stitch window. So I'm gonna X that out. We no longer need the input videos window. So I'm gonna X that out as well. And I'm just gonna stretch this window down a little bit so you get a better idea of what this looks like. So the next step is to straighten out the horizon. So I'm gonna click in the window here and pull it down. And I'm gonna pull it down here and pull this up. So that's pretty straight. I'm not gonna work on this for too, like, too long. So what I'm gonna do is just click apply so it holds that position. Now the first thing we notice, because I was shooting in auto with the GoPros, uh, we have some overexposed shots here and some underexposed shots. So we wanna blend that all together. So I'm gonna to go to color up top here and make sure these are all selected. I'm also gonna select gradient and then click apply. And you'll notice that they'll all be uh, blended together so it looks more natural. There we go, that looks a thousand times better. Uh, the next step would be to just export this. So you go to render and then what I do is select um, H.264, 4K and then I'll change, the, change this to NTSC and then make sure the frame rate is 2997. And I'll change the bit rate usually to 55 megabits per second. 
Then I'll click render. So this is what the five GoPros look like when you stitch them together. So I just wanna show you how to quickly add a logo into this blank space because you know you don't want it just to look like this. That just looks too weird. So I'm gonna go to edit and then this, what this is gonna do is open up Auto Pano Giga. And now I'm gonna click edit again. And basically down below, I'm gonna click add images and I'm gonna go to that folder where I have that logo so let's go to it let's choose it now this logo doesn't make sense for this tutorial but that's fine so i'm going to click on the logo here right click and i'm going to go to click move to new layer and we're going to rename blended layer to patch we're going to click the move images tool here and what i want to do next is bring the panorama to look like that so let's just straighten it out. And next, click on picture, and we're gonna move the six camera down below here. Now, what I wanna do is rotate it a little bit. And I also wanna make it a little bigger, so. Okay, and what I wanna do now is bring the panorama straight again. Just like that. And now when you click this button here, it's gonna push it to Auto Panel Video Pro. And now you have the logo down below. Okay, so you've exported your 360 degree video. Now it's time to get it online so people can watch it. Now, if you wanna upload to Facebook, it's pretty simple. Just upload it, go to the advanced section, and then just check off that it's a 360 degree video. Now, if you wanna upload it to YouTube, you actually have to do one more step. You have to add some metadata into that video file so that YouTube knows how to play it back. 360 Heroes added a feature into Camman so that it adds that metadata into that video file. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. All right, so earlier we were working in the Workflow Tools tab. We're gonna to wanna to go to the Conversion and Video Tools tab to do the YouTube metadata. Now, quickly before I show you how to do that, let me just show you some other things in here. So if you have a large video file, you know, you end up, the GoPro ends up splitting up the two files, so you have two. So what you can do in the Merge Videos tool uh, section is merge the two video files together so that you have one long video clip. Uh, another thing you could do is in the Video Sync Offset, like sometimes in color or in uh, video stitch, you won't get accurate synchronization. So what you can do is import all your video footage into Adobe Premiere or uh, Final Cut Pro and find out what the exact frame offset is. And then you add those file uh, numbers here. So let's just say 56, 90, 100, 500, uh, 6,000 and one. So what you would do is add these numbers here, the new offset into video stitch or in auto panel video pro, and then you'll have an accurate synchronization across all six cameras. Now to add the metadata, go to the YouTube 360 tab and then find your video file and then just drag that video file right here. Then just click prepare 360 video file for, for YouTube. You don't need this anymore. And then you'll notice, you have a new file. So this has a new name, so you could distinguish between the different files. And it says YouTube 360 ready. So that's the one you're gonna wanna upload onto YouTube. All right, so after you get your video uploaded onto YouTube, YouTube's gonna actually process that video file. It might take some time, so you might need to wait for it to be interactive, but we'll check it out here. This is in 4K and looks good. All right. I covered as much as possible in this video. I know it was long, but there's just so much to cover. But I hope you found this overview of the 360 Heroes, 360 GoPro mount, and Camman software helpful, as well as learning how to shoot 360 degree videos and stitching them together using the Autopano Video Pro software. Now, if you found this helpful, give me a like. That helps me out a lot. And just keep in mind, down in the description, I'm gonna have links to everything. So if there's anything that you need, just check out the description. It should be there, as well as other information that I might have left out in this video. So, like I said, that's the end of this video, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.